Welcome to the mini service of Trinity Episcopal Church Boonville with the sermon of Mother Linda Logan for the third Sunday of Easter. Now the fourth time Jesus has appeared to his disciples following his resurrection. The first was to Mary Magdalene alone. The second was to the disciples minus Thomas. The third to the disciples including Thomas. Now it is to a group of seven who've gone fishing together on the Sea of Tiberias, but who, despite having fished all night, have caught nothing. How appropriate! All of the named disciples in this encounter are persons who have been shown either in this gospel or in one of the others to be in the dark as to what Jesus is about. They have caught nothing of what he has demonstrated or said. And look at the order in which they are named. Simon Peter, the disciple who denied any association with Jesus. 
Thomas, the one who doubted Jesus' resurrection. Nathaniel, the one who discounted Jesus before he even met him, because Jesus came from Nazareth, a place too insignificant to produce the one about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. And then there are James and John, the sons of Zebedee, those firebrands who, according to Mark's gospel, ask Jesus to grant themselves the highest places of honor in Jesus' glory. Obviously, these two were in the dark as to what Jesus was about. These are the five disciples who are named and are listed, as I see it, in descending order of magnitude of failure. Now, John, the son of Zebedee, might be the beloved disciple, the disciple referred to in this gospel as the one whom Jesus loved. The other two of this group that has gone fishing likely are Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, and Philip. If so, this is a regrouping of the original disciples that are named in John's Gospel. All of them, that is, but Judas. Now, Andrew and Simon Peter and James and John are identified from the start as fishermen. So it's no wonder that the four of them would revert to their former occupation with the disappearance of Jesus from the scene. But the other three? This isn't sport fishing, something to do to take your mind off of your worries. This is commercial net fishing, dragging nets through the deep water of this sea, which you need to know, is also known as the Sea of Galilee. You should be picking up some echoes now. Where do the earlier Gospels of Mark and Matthew say the disciples are told that Jesus will meet them after he is raised? In Galilee. Luke's Gospel doesn't. Luke's Gospel says that Jesus will come to them in Jerusalem. That's because Luke is writing a two-part Gospel that is going to show the evangelization of the world proceeding from Jerusalem, the city where Jesus is killed. But Mark and Matthew say the disciples are told that Jesus will come to them in Galilee. And the writer of John's Gospel would have had familiarity with that tradition. So here, in this chapter, which scholars consider to be an add-on to the original Gospel of John, we find the original band of disciples, all the ones who figure by name in John's Gospel. And what are they doing? Fishing, unsuccessfully for fish, until Jesus calls to them from the shore. Children, this is how the members of the community that produced the material in the New Testament 
that goes under the name of John were addressed. Children, you have no fish, have you? Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. The right side signifies prosperity, blessing, by the way. So the disciples cast their net as instructed by Jesus, and lo, they are not able to haul it in. It now contains so many fish. Is this group being taught now in symbol how to fish? If so, we're not ending this gospel with just a return to the former occupation of half of the group. We're seeing one last demonstration of what it means to follow Jesus. Cast your nets as he directs, and you will be fishing for and hauling in people. Now, if you're not yet convinced that we're dealing with symbolic action here, look at what happens next. Jesus feeds the group with bread and fish, just as he fed the 5,000 on the hillside. This isn't just any successful fisherman who is spreading breakfast before them. This is the Lord they knew, and he is the Lord of life. And the message that is carried forward in this last meal of the group pictured together is that of the sustenance Jesus gives unbounded sustenance to everyone who comes to him. And remember, he turns no one away. This gospel has already told us that. The original group is being fed once more, instructed once more, so they can go out and spread the sustenance of Christ, that bread of heaven, to all the world. The scene now shifts to Jesus and Peter alone. Peter, who has denied Jesus three times, is given three opportunities to affirm his love for Jesus. And in what will his love for Jesus be demonstrated? In his feeding and tending of Jesus' sheep, Jesus' flock. So the last group of people to whom Jesus appears in this gospel is composed largely of disciples who in one way or another have written Jesus off. And yet the implication of the text is that these are the people to whom Jesus is entrusting his mission. Amazing grace indeed. So what do we get out of this? Is Jesus asking the same of us? Do you love me? Yes, and probably not just three times each, but more like the also scriptural 70 times seven. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep. The message is for all who would be Jesus disciples.
listening to a spiritual offering from Trinity Episcopal Church located on Schuyler Street in Boonville. We're glad to be part of your day, and we invite you to join us in person for our weekly service at 9 o'clock Sunday mornings. <laughs>